Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today I'm just gonna be continuing on my weight loss Q&A questions that I got from you guys on Instagram and Tumblr and Facebook, and I'm just gonna be answering those. So the first question, the first question that I have today is, do you believe in metabolic damage? How long does it take to reverse it? And how do you fix it? So I <laughs> do believe in metabolic damage, but I don't think that I believe in it the same, to the same extent that a lot of other high carb, low fat vegans believe in it. So I do think that it does exist. I think, you know, if you restrict your calories by a massive amount, like, like kind of like they did in the biggest loser study. So, right. These people were restricting their calories to 800, a thousand a day. They were exercising five or six hours a day. And these people came from eating, you know, lots and lots of food, lots of crappy food, all that kind of stuff to basically completely turning their diet 180% and you know, doing this very extreme diet for six months, I think it was six months, and losing all this weight. And there's a lot of things that go into that type of, you know, a situation. They have a huge prize money, they're on TV, like they really want to lose weight to win this show and do all this kind of stuff. And the scientists in the study had like proved that, you know, these people's metabolic rate was severely damaged from doing this. So I think if you do something very, very extreme like that for a long time, you lose a lot of weight and then you try to eat normally, it's not going to work. Your body is going to be burning a different amount of calories just because you're you weigh half the amount that you did before and you're not going to have like the foundation to sustain something like that for the rest of your life the most sustainable diets and the diets that work and the diets that people you know can do for the rest of their life and keep weight off are something that they can do forever so you want to be able to you know eat a normal amount of food be full and satisfied off of your food and not have a very restrictive diet like a lot of people will come to the high carb low fat vegan diet they'll be like i'm gonna eat 2500 calories a day i'm gonna eat no salt no fat i'm just gonna eat you know very 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 low fat like 95.5 and i'm gonna lose all this weight recover my metabolic damage and be perfect or whatever in a you know a year or two but a lot of people find that very very unsustainable and actually the next question that i have is going to cover this a little bit more but i do believe in metabolic damage to an extent they have studies where they have recovered anorexics you know on a 2500 calorie a day diet a weight gain diet and their metabolisms metabolisms actually recover to a normal state within like a few months. So I don't think that metabolic damage, it's necessary if you're overweight to, you know, gain 40 pounds and then recover and lose all this weight. I don't think that it takes years and years to recover from. I don't think, you know, that it's to the extent that a lot of people say that it is. If you lose weight, like going from 200 pounds to 120 pounds, your body is just burning a lot less calories because you have less mass. You don't have to move as much weight around every day. You don't have to deal with um, having all that fat on your body and carrying it with you. Like people that weigh more burn more calories, even just getting out of bed or going for a walk or doing any exercise at all, they burn way more calories. So yeah, like if you lose weight, your BMR does go down. That just happens naturally because you have less mass. But I do believe in metabolic damage, just not to the extent, like I said, but I think the way to fix it is to just go on a whole foods plant-based diet. Don't do anything extreme. Don't say like, oh, I'm only gonna eat fruit. I'm not gonna eat any salt. I'm not gonna eat any processed foods. I'm just gonna eat raw food or I'm just gonna be 100% starch solution. I'm not gonna have any avocado or any salt or anything like that. Like I think that it has to be something that is sustainable for the rest of your life. It has to be something that you can do, that you enjoy doing. The food needs to be satisfying so that you enjoy eating it every single day and all of those kinds of things need to be a foundation for your future life because the people on the biggest loser they do something very 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 extreme and then they go back to their house you know in nashville or wherever they're from and they're with their families and their families are still eating like whatever and there's all these temptations and they don't learn like a foundation for how they should eat properly when they get home so they gain all that weight back because there's still like the emotional connection between food and binging and how it makes them feel and like they never really get the fundamentals to have a healthy long prosperous life living a way that is very sustainable so it's very extreme and then it's very you know daunting when they go home and that's why they gain a lot of their weight back 
So the next question that I have is how much fat do you eat in a day? What about oil? This kind of ties into the other one because she was talking about in this question as well um, You know should I eat like 95 5 should I eat super 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 low fat? I don't think that that is necessary and I don't eat super 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 low fat I tried to I tried to go no overt fats I tried to do all that kind of stuff and I talk a lot about like when I first went high carb low fat vegan I would have like 1500 calories worth of rice for dinner with no salt or it would have a no sodium tomato sauce on it and I would have no fat or anything like that and I would be eating these meals and be very like unsatisfied because all I wanted was just a little bit of flavor or salt or something that was satisfying. So what I noticed when I went more intuitive eating route and like starch based after I'd gained 30 pounds doing this, <laughs> I found that I could eat, you know, five to 600 calories worth of rice, have half an avocado on it, some soy sauce, and it would be very, very satisfying to me. And I wouldn't be in my kitchen, like looking around for food after I just had a 1500 calorie dinner, because maybe I was full, you know, in the sense that my belly was full and I had like the energy that I needed, but I didn't have like what my body was really craving because I was denying myself avocado and I was denying myself overt fats and I was denying myself salt and all these other things that really made my food satisfying for me. And the thing is like a lot of people that have issues on eating a high carb, low fat vegan diet and try to go to these extremes and things like that, they need to feel satisfied when they eat their food. And a lot of people like me, like for me, my food has to be very delicious and satisfying for me to feel like I had an actual meal. You know, Derek, he can do just plain rice and he can do things like that. So some of the people are very successful eating very like no sodium, very basic meals because they just don't really care that much about food. Personally for me though, I'm like a huge foodie. If my food isn't, it's, if it's not a good meal and it's not satisfying, it doesn't do anything for me. Like I will still want more food because that's just how I kind of am programmed. So it really depends. But I think if you crave more fat, eat more whole fats. I do not promote eating oil at all just because it's so, so calorically dense that it's just totally unnecessary you don't need it in your diet you don't need it to be healthy you can just have you know the fats in their whole forms like olives and coconut and avocado and whatever else it is you don't need oil to cook you can easily rep replace it with water in any recipe so definitely just stay away from oil if you crave more fats and eat more fats and just do what really works for you the other part of that question actually it's an actually a different question but it goes along with it is this girl asked what do, what do i do if high carb low fat doesn't work for me like what if i can't eat you know 95 5 or 80 10 10 or whatever and can i eat more protein and can i eat more fats and one thing that i do also want to say on the fat issue is over the last three years there have been so many girls that have contacted me saying like their skin just looks like crap their hair is so dry and it's you know not growing properly or it's falling out or they've lost their period or all these other issues have come up and they don't feel satisfied eating you know super low fat and they just feel jittery and they can't do it so if that's how you feel like you really need to listen to your own body and eating whole plant fats is not unhealthy like it's not bad for you if you're eating like 80 percent fat sure like that's not obviously healthy because we need carbohydrates to fuel our day and fuel our lives but eating 20 percent fat is still a low fat diet eating even 30 percent fat like it's not like you're eating half of your calories from fat or anything like that and plus you're eating plant fats you're not eating animal fats that have tons of hormones and saturated fat and like all this other crap in it pus and dairy and like all kinds of things like that you're eating stuff that is grown from the earth that your body knows how to metabolize that it's not going to have a crazy effect on your hormones or anything like that so if you have lost your period your hair isn't growing or it's falling out or your skin you know doesn't look good definitely eat more fat i would say for me personally like a 20 percent fat diet works the best for me and every time that i try to go super super low fat like i always just gravitate back towards eating more whole fats but i do still eat like a very very high carb diet and you can tell that from my energy you can tell just from everything that i get done every single day like riding up a mountain all the time riding my bike everywhere we don't have a car just the amount of like stuff that i have to do every single day like i couldn't do that 
you know, if I wasn't eating enough, if I wasn't eating the proper amounts of food for my body, if I wasn't eating enough carbohydrates, I wouldn't be able to do the things that I want to do. But on the other hand, like you don't have to eat 3000 calories to be able to get your day done with. Like I find a lot of times also that eating more, like eating, if I eat way past what I feel like I should, and when I was smashing it in and eating 2,500, 3,000 calories a day, like I had to take a nap every single day because I got so tired just from my body digesting and metabolizing all this food because digestion takes up a ton of energy. It is a huge process that our body has to go through. So if you're feeling really, really tired and you have to take a nap after every single meal, you should probably be eating like smaller meals, maybe more often or something like that. But definitely like, just adding in, you know, more vegetables, more greens, more whole fats is going to make you feel more satisfied. It's going to make you feel fuller and just a lot better in the long run than eating just a super high carb, high fruit, white rice, sugar diet. Personally, that's just my experience and how I feel. So I'm going to make another video because this one's getting kind of long, but hopefully this was helpful for you guys and leave all of your comments and questions below and I will see you very, very soon.